Hey, hey, what's going on guys, Nick here, welcome back to my video. Today we are not allowed to ride the bike, because we're on lockdown. But today I'm doing 8 reasons why you should still buy a 2014 Yamaha in 2020. So firstly we're going to start with the reason, um, it's very customisable. Um, you know, this isn't see-through, that's got my name on it. Got the handlebars, got brake protectors, uh, different clutch over here. Uh, Non-stock mirrors, um, the fairings have all been carbon dipped. Um, I did have a custom plate on, but I have got a tail tidy on, and I do have a sport exhaust on, and I am very aware that this is stuff you can do on other motorbikes, oh, and I also have a carbon protector on here. Um, I know this is stuff you can do on other motorbikes, but this is just focusing on the uh, Yamaha 2014. Okay, then next we move on to the fact that there is loads of spare parts for the 2014 model because it's so old. Uh, there's a lot of people breaking their bikes, you can find fairings, you know, engines, exhausts, rear pegs like I did, new clocks like I have. You know, you can find all of that on eBay, Facebook, Gumtree, there's loads going about. There's no end of parts you can find. So if you break anything, you're more than likely to replace it within a week. And next, it's a well-known bike model. It's one of the most popular bikes, so there is obviously a lot of information about it online. So if anything goes wrong with it, you can have a little Google, you know, take about half an hour, maybe, maybe even a couple of seconds to find information you're looking for if you break it. So any information is really easy to find on this bike um, because it's so well known. So there's going to be not a lot that's unknown about it. So it's going to be really easily fixed with, fixed with no problems. So next is the fairing design. I think this is one of the best fairing designs that you can find on a 125 motorbike. Um, it's better than the 2008 model because you've got this in the front, which just looks a lot nicer to me. And it just looks a lot more streamlined. And I believe this is better than the 2019 as well, because this looks, you know, proper sport, beefy. It looks a lot nicer. So another reason you should consider one of these bikes, the 2014, 2018, is the look at the fairings. Um, you can't find fairings like this on another motorbike, where it just looks so perfect. Okay, so moving around on to the front, the next reason is the digital dash. This is one of the main reasons I got this bike. Um, so when you buy the bike, if you don't upgrade it, you're gonna get a dash that looks exactly like this. It goes up and into the sides. With, so the temperature goes up there and the fuel goes up there. Whereas if you get a 2016 to 2018 bike, the clock will go that way and all this will go up that way. Like you saw on my previous videos where I've been swapping the clocks about. So the clocks are also exchangeable. Um, it's got a lot of detail on here. You've got mile per hour, change of kilometers. You've got your RPM, your temperature, your fuel. Um, there you've got your fuel fuel light. There you've got your oil light. There you got your ABS light. Mine's not supposed to be on. Something is going wrong with my electrical system. Uh, then you get distance since service, your last oil service. Then you get your average mile per gallon. Um, so that there, and you get your trip time, your average speed, and your service. Then here you got your neutral light on the side, and that's about it for the digital dash. Except for down here, so you got your odometer, the time. If you press the button, you get your trip one, trip two, and back to your odometer. Okay, so now this one is quite a controversial topic. But I still want to point out is the fact that this is a non-ABS model. Um, I like having full control over the braking system. Where, you know, it's not... I know ABS helps stabilise the bike and everything. But I like being in full control of my vehicle. And this is what I like to ride. No ABS. Um, it's a great system to have. Because I control how it stops. Although I'm not as fast as an ABS model would be. But at least I know it's me actually stopping the bike. And not an assistive system that could in fact go wrong, or you know, I could misjudge using ABS. We can have two different ideas of where we stop. Um, yeah, so this is non-ABS, gives you full control over the bike's braking ability, and that's just what I prefer. Okay, and then next, we're gonna move on to the speed of the bike. So, the overall performance. Um, for me, this bike is incredibly fast, in my opinion. I've seen 88 mile an hour on a dash, at 10,000 RPM, meaning there's a bit more to go. Um, I'm going to do a test and see if I can get more than 88 and then GPS it as well, just so I can confirm if it is actually that speed or not. So, for a 125, in my opinion, this is a very quick bike. Um, my dad, that rides 1000cc, says it's very quick for a 125. 
So I'd say it's definitely worth having a look at a 2014 Yamaha with a sports system. And lastly, the best bit, for me, it's one of the best bits, is the sound that you can make these things have. So for a 125, you expect it to sound like a lawnmower, um, or you know, a hairdryer as a lot of people call them. Um, whereas these bikes, I know you can do this to a lot of bikes, but this is what I like mine to sound like. <laughs> You know, it sounds really, really nice compared to a lot of other stock 125s. I know this isn't stock, but compared to a stock, this sounds so much nicer. Um, so it's just a little video I wanted to make to give you guys a little bit of reasoning why you should get a 2014 to 2018 YZF in 2020. Uh, but definitely still worth it. There's a lot you can still do to them. Uh, yeah, but anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and please do subscribe. It helps my channel out a lot. And I will see you next video.